my issues, my issues with um, weight loss and the struggle of, of being healthy goes back quite a ways. Um, actually, the last couple days, I've been kind of reflecting on my journey and what worked and what didn't work. I came to some pretty uh, amazing um, revelations to myself anyways. Um, I'm the girl who has done it all, right? I did um, every kind of weight loss gimmick out there from, and some of these, I'm not calling them gimmicks. Okay, let's, let's back up. I have tried every weight loss thing out there, right? Um, I've done the Weight Watchers, I've done the tops, I've done um, the little pills, I've done the drinks, I've done the, the spoon, all of that kind of stuff, right? I've done the starvation diets, the grapefruit diet, the boiled egg diet, um, all of those kind of things, right? And what I found um, throughout my life is yes, at different times, different things help you, right? But for me, the weight loss or the the healthy eating was so much more than the plan or the program I was on. And I find out that is where all of my, my issues or my problems or my consistency happened, right? What I found is uh, when I was a young child, I was not a chunky child. I was not heavy boned as I like to, uh, I like to consider myself later on or thick boned or whatever. I was a regular kid. Um, we lived in Koshin. My parents had the riding stables. And when I was at a very young age, we moved um, to the farm. And um, it was in my probably elementary um, ages that I started to have issues with, with food. And I think looking back at it, it had nothing really to do with the food, but the situations that the food was around, right? Um, I came from a very long line of addicts. Um, we had a lot of alcoholism in um, my family uh, on both my mom's side and my dad's side um, stuff. And, um, and I remember seeing my mom um, having to deal with a lot of this, right? And um, when you have no control over the situations around you, you control what you can. And my mom, she was an emotional eater and I could see that when she was upset, she would eat, right? And so when I was upset, um, I was the oldest child and I was, you know, going through all this and so I would eat too. And then everything, everything in our lives always seemed to center around food. My mom was an amazing cook. Um, she's an amazing cook. So when it was your birthday, you had your, your special, your, what were your favorites, right? My mom would cook our favorites. Um, my mom would do all the, um, family holidays, right? Like my mom would cook for Christmas. She would cook like easily for 50, 60 people for Christmas, um, for Easter's and all of this kind of stuff. Everything was centered about food. When you were upset at, you know, as we got older and maybe we went home to talk to mom about something because we were upset about something. You know, she she had out food. Um, people stopped in at my mom's for coffee. They never just had coffee. My mom always offered them something to eat, right? And uh, so it also became a social aspect. But more and more, I realized that my issue was definitely emotional eating and not connecting the two, right? Not connecting the two. And over the last little while, um, I, I went, I went like this, right? I probably gained and lost more my body weight, like about six times already, right? And I'm, I'm now in that healthy um, eating plan again, and I'm starting to lose the weight. But it's not just what I'm eating, but it's now what I'm thinking, and that's what I want to share with you guys. Um, anytime, like I said before, when things were out of control. That is when I really seem to eat. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I would eat. I would pick at things if I was bored or whatever. But really that, that grieving process, that grieving process or that un, out of control process is where I really seem to, to pack on the weight. It's like I was empty inside and I was trying to fill that emptiness with something, right? Um. So I, I'm thinking about how many years ago. It must have been about six years ago now, five, six years ago, I was the heaviest I ever was. And I wasn't happy. Um, I was totally, I didn't feel my, find myself worthy. I was disgusted with myself. I had no energy and I knew I had to do something. And yes, I've tried it all at that point. Um, but uh, a neighbor lady actually was going to uh, exercise into a boot camp, right? So she invited me along and I, and I hated it. I really hated it. I was the girl, I honestly was the girl that if you had to run after something, 
it wasn't worth it, right? If it wasn't worth it, so I, I was not that girl. I was the girl who skipped out of phys ed all the time, stuff like that. But I, I joined the, the boot camp and it wasn't just the exercise, but it was the fellowship with the women around and all that kind of stuff that I all of a sudden just started to find out who I was and to develop. And that was really good. Like I lost between that and some clean, healthy eating, we call it Trim Healthy Mama, which is very similar to keto. I lost 60 pounds, yeah, 60 pounds. And I was feeling the best shape of my life, all that kind of stuff. Things were going pretty good, right? Things are going pretty good. I mean, you have your normal ups and downs. Um, but then after that, um, that's when I had some other things, right? COVID hit, COVID hit. Um, it was um, like like for all of you guys, right? It was the unknown, the uncertainty, um, you know, having to um, pivot constantly, constantly. I am a person that I love lists. I love to know what I'm doing the next next week, the next month to have goals, right? All of a sudden COVID come and it just blew everything out of the world. Um, our store closed down. Um, we had to work in different areas. Um, I was a basket case trying to figure out how I was gonna hold it, not only together for myself and my family, but for the girls that worked for me and stuff, and I was trying to support them mentally um, as well as myself. And, and, you know, it was just a lot on it. So I couldn't control it. I could not control it. So I just started eating and um, I had that kind of a situation. So we went through that, like, well, with the pandemic, right? I probably gained about 20, 25 pounds back with the pandemic. And then I kind of got back into, okay, now it's time to get your your life into control. Even though things had not fully opened up again, um, things were starting to, to make that process, right? That process that things were gonna get better. Um, it was my birthday, I was excited. I was having a bunch of friends over. We were doing a fondue. I ran up to my office to grab a paper. And as I was coming out of my office, I tripped and fell down the stairs. Um, I ended up um, cutting my eyebrow, my entire face, this whole side was completely bruised. I tried to brace my fall with my wrist. Uh, I ended up breaking it in five places and I have screws and plates and stuff. And I'm not a person to sit back and do nothing. Um, people who know me that know that. So even though I was supposed to be off work for six weeks, I tried to I tried to do what I could, right? I tried to do what I could at home. I Even to the point that I had my husband holding up uh, clothing from the store and I was talking about it because I couldn't get out of bed. I had no energy to get out of bed, but I was still doing something. I was texting with the girls. Uh, they were asking me, okay, what should I do with this? Where should I put this? I, I was helping them there. I had my online businesses, my makeup uh, business at that point and I was still trying to like serve my customers and and do the best that I could right I thought I was surviving I thought I was but then in you know late night that anxiety would hit and you know I didn't know what to do John was off at work so what I would do I'd get up and eat right get up and eat because that's the only thing I could control was what I was putting into my body right so again some more weight packed on fast forward a little bit more and okay I've, I've healed through this. I went through extensive phys uh, physical therapy. I learned to deal with the pain. I learned to, you know, change how I was doing things, all of that kind of stuff. Um, okay, fast forward. Um, I then ended up getting infection in my arm. It was called cellulitis, which actually spread down my arm. Again, losing control, trying to be brave for everybody, right? Trying to, oh, you know, it's nothing. And, you know, continuing to work as much as I could through it all and stuff. And inside, like I was so full of fear, like, oh my God, am I going to lose my arm? What's going on? You know, I, I didn't share that with anybody, not even my husband. I never shared it with anybody, all these fears that were going through me. What I did, I continued to eat, right? So got that cleared up. Fast forward again, like Tammy, you should be learning by now. Fast forward again and um, put up my, my dream greenhouse, right? I put it up. Um, I don't know how long it lasted, like two, three weeks. In fact, I was telling a girlfriend the other day, if I would have known that its plan on earth was that short, I would have spent a little bit more time in there and I would have enjoyed it a little bit more, right? But a plow wind um, just recently come through and, and destroyed it, like some shingles off the roof and all that kind of stuff. Um, and even though I am so grateful that none of my family and friends were, were hurt in that storm, um, you know, yeah, we have some material casualties, but that's life. Um, I thought it was okay with everything, right? And then you know, the wind settles down and everything kind of goes by. And then all of a sudden, myself, who was on he uh, healthy eating probably for about three, two, three weeks at that point, all of a sudden, that night when I kind of like had time to breathe, 
I found myself in the kitchen, two o'clock in the morning in the kitchen, looking for cookies or looking for whatever to stuff in. My girlfriend had dropped off some cookies for John and I opened up the package and I had eaten like four until all of a sudden reality hit. And I'm like, Tammy, what are you doing, right? What are you doing? And that's what I really realized. It was just like I was, I don't know, out of body experience or whatever. And I was looking at myself out of control again. And I'm like, no, insanity. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results, right? So I took a big look back at this and I'm like, no, no, there are certain things. Um, a girlfriend um, just recently, um, showed me this eating plan and it's very similar to keto and I, and I really enjoy keto. So it's very, very similar. You can have a little bit of carbs and stuff, but my whole thing was always portion control, right? I could eat healthy. I could eat all the, I have no problems with salads and vegetables and all of this kind of stuff. But then I would eat like as much as a truck driver, right? In fact, it was a joke. Like it was a joke that I could out eat John easily. Um, and, um, I realized that, that, it was like that fear of missing out, right? Like I had to keep, I remember, I honestly remember going, like say grabbing a coffee on the road to Saskatoon to go do something. And I thought, oh, I better grab something to eat. So instead of grabbing like one breakfast sandwich, I would grab two. It was just that fear that, oh my God, it won't be there. It won't be there, right? So I would I would overeat just stupid things like that. Um, so yeah, now I'm, I'm, I'm more conscious of what I eat. I can't, um, mindlessly eat and I guess for me that's like I cannot eat in the living room I cannot eat in front of a television if I do I can probably eat five times my helping because I don't register full right I I I've come to learn that I don't I go from not being full to being literally ill like literally ill, but I don't register that full so now I know like I'm doing the things that I know that I need to do, right? I need to eat in the dining room. I need to drink more water. I need to portion control my food out because even if it's healthy, even if it's good for you, too much is still too much, right? Um, so I don't know if any of that will help you. One of the things that's also helped me that I want to share with you guys is at my thinnest, and I'll show you some pictures after this uh, video, um, and that wasn't that long ago. That was like two years ago. I was in the best shape I ever was. And I remember that feeling. And that's what I'm going back to now is um, I'm going back to, okay, how did I feel like that? And I'm not saying it's all about being thin. Like I wasn't really even that small on the actual scale, but I was toned and I was exercised and I felt, I felt good. So that's the things that I'm, I'm going back to is when I walk by a piece of cake. For example, I think, okay, that cake might taste good for a couple minutes or whatever it takes me to devour it. But how would I feel going in and putting on that size jeans that are one size smaller than I am in right now? How would that make me feel? How would I make me feel when I get on that scale or I measure those inches and I feel good? How would it make me feel to take the dogs for a run and not a walk and feel like I have more energy, right? So all of those things, and that's some of the tips that I'm saying is, one, find out what your triggers are. Find out what your triggers are. If it's like stress or anxiety or if it's boredom or what, what is the thing, right? What is the anxiety? Because honestly, you can eat whatever you want if you control it, right? If you control it, um, if you like pierogies or if you like homemade bread or whatever, if you have one piece of homemade bread slathered in butter, there isn't an issue. Our problem is we don't stop at one, right? We got to keep eating more and more. So all I'm saying, my tips for you guys are to think why, what is causing your triggers? And then what can you do in when those triggers hit, right? When that stress comes up and something comes up that you're not prepared for or whatever, what can you do instead? Um, one of the things I was telling a girlfriend the other day too is I have a list. I have an absolute list of things that will take me approximately 10 minutes to do. So all of a sudden, if I have that urge to eat or snack, I don't need to snack. I have enough fat on my body that my body can munch on its fat in the evening, right? So instead of having a snack, okay, what's something that I can do? So I, I grab out the list and maybe it's cleaning out a couple dresser drawers. Maybe it's going for a walk. Maybe it's uh, having a shower. Maybe it's going for a bath. Maybe it's reading a chapter in a book. And as I try to do all of those things with a glass of water, right? So if you can have a glass of water, because sometimes, sometimes we're not really hungry 
we're just thirsty, right? So I have a glass of water and I'll do something. Then when I come back to that, if all of a sudden that urge hits me to eat something again, I grab that list out again. So not only am I accomplishing a whole lot of crap, girlfriends, um, and getting that done, but I'm taking control, right? And then when I crawl into bed, and sometimes I'm just exhausted, and I'm one of those people where I'm really tired. I think by eating more, I'll get more energy. So sometimes if I'm really exhausted and it's 8 o'clock at night, I go to bed. I literally go to bed. And I might sit there at night and think about the cookies or think about whatever. I truly, truly also, another tip is don't bring the crap into your house. Don't bring the crap into your house. Why fight those kind of temptations, right? So if you think that um, sugars and cookies and uh, candied cereal and stuff are no good for you, they're no good for your kids either, right? So try to break that cycle. So if you're battling with eating problems or whatever, don't let your kids do that. Like take control, right? Be be stop it now so that they there's so much in this world that everybody has to fight and go through that they don't need that right they don't need that so set that example for them so getting back to it again have a list have a list of what you can do um healthy choices i know a lot of people say that eating healthy is more expensive than uh, junk food well first of all that junk food that is going to end up in your stomach in your arteries in your veins in your hearts it's going to cause you a lot of medical problems how much is that worth to you? How much is that worth to you? How much is your self-esteem worth, right? Um, and then there is a lot of ways. You don't need the fancy ingredients. You don't need the high-priced cut meats or whatever. There's a lot of recipes out there that you can do on a budget and still eat healthy, right? Um, myself, I try to stay away from the, the processed sections in the grocery stores. Um, you know, instead of having... Uh, things out of a can I try to use fresh whatever the other thing is is I try to use what's in my pantry or in my deep freeze rather than the reverse they can looking at the cookbooks and say okay I want to make all this and then I have to go buy all of that yeah then that gets a little stressful right and money is a stress trigger too that people eat right so I, I look and say okay no I have I have chicken in my freezer let's look at some recipes for some chicken whatever the case may be um, what other things can I do uh, making sure that you have a, a, a buddy right have a buddy that um can talk to you you're still one thing i've learned over years is i've had lots of different accountability buddies but the thing is you still have to take responsibility for you right you can't force them to eat something or not eat something or do something it's you all it is is if you want an accountability buddy be honest with them and be open right and just say okay this is how much water i drank today this is what i did Find things that interest you, right? And most of all, I want you to envision or whatever it is, what the new you is going to be and start living like her. Show up today like her, right? If she is healthy and and she is uh, not obese and she's, her, you know, her blood pressure's down and her blood sugars are in control and all that kind of stuff, start showing up at that person. How does that healthy person eat? eat like her right how does that ex uh that healthy person exercise maybe you're not a, a gym person right maybe it's just going for a walk maybe it's going out into your yard and picking a few weeds that bending over and stuff that is good right whatever it may be doing those kind of things getting your waters in and yeah you know sometimes you're going to eat that cookie or you're going to eat that piece of cake don't beat yourself up about it don't continue to make excuses for it though like oh um it's Wednesday, you know, or it's so-and-so's birthday or it's so-and-so's goodbye party or whatever. You know, we can make excuses all we want. Hold yourself accountable. But if you do eat something, eat a small portion. You know, whatever you think. Okay, I'm just going to eat a small piece of cake. Cut yourself a, a small piece of cake. Then cut it in half and only eat that half, right? And then move on. Remove those temptations for your life. And most importantly, believe in yourself okay believe in yourself and believe that you're worth it you know that you're absolutely worth it I've got I went through years and years of um, being heavy in school and not thinking I was worth it not thinking you know I deserve to eat healthy or whatever because of all these emotional problems and I thought being heavy was my fault well, in a way it was, but I wasn't dealing with the emotional issues, right? Once I started dealing with the emotional and the not being in control or, or, you know, being fearful or whatever, then, then, now my life gets a little bit better. And now I can recognize those signs that, oh, I'm putting stuff into my mouth that I don't need to be, you know, like I'm not hungry. And those are the kinds of things that help me. I hope these tips and tricks help you. Um, 
in the comments let me know if you have another suggestion that would help people right uh, because you know we're only better together if we can share these ideas and help each other you know what that's what we're all here for I might not be in the shape I was a few years ago but I'm on the right track and that's what's important have a great day beautiful and remember you deserve it you are worthy